While you've been uh, here in the country, in the capital, northeast part of Delhi, there have been uh, violent clashes. Police have been killed, uh, some yeah. demonstrators. Uh, nine deaths so far we hear and about a hundred plus injured. Um, what did uh, Prime Minister Modi say to you about this amended citizenship law and uh, how concerned are you about this kind of religious violence? Even? So we did talk about religious freedom and I will say that the Prime Minister was incredible on what he told me. He wants people to have religious freedom and very strongly and he said that in India, India they have uh, they have worked very hard to have great and open religious freedom. And if you look back and look at what's going on relative to other places especially, but they have really worked hard on religious freedom. I, I asked that question in front of a very large group of people today, and he talked about it. We talked about it for a long time, and uh, I really believe that's what he wants. As far as the individual attack, I heard about it, but I didn't discuss that with him. That's uh, up to India. Yeah, go ahead, please. Hi, sir. Emily Goodman with TheDailyMail.com. I was wondering, do you think justice was served in the Harvey Weinstein case? So I was never a fan of Harvey Weinstein, as you know. In fact, he said he was going to work hard to defeat me in the election. How did that work out, by the way? I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, he, uh, he was a person I didn't like, never liked. Uh, I don't know too much about the case because, as you know, I've been over here for tr between traveling and and being at meetings almost every hour of the day, every minute of the day, I haven't been able to really see too much of it. But I was just not a fan of his. I, I knew him a little bit, not very well. I knew him because he was in New York. Uh, not, not a person that I like. I will say the, the people that liked him were the Democrats. Uh, Michelle Obama loved him, loved him. Hillary Clinton loved him. And he uh, gave tremendous money to the Democrats. And I guess my question is, will the Democrats be asking for that money back? Because he gave a lot of money to the Democrats. And, uh, you know, it's too bad, but that's the way it worked. Uh, yeah, Peter? I just want to follow up on that very quickly, if I can, Mr. President, then I have a question that I wanted to ask you. But just on the Harvey Weinstein situation, this is being viewed as a milestone for the Me Too movement. What message can you as president deliver to women in America who are still afraid to come forward and share their stories of sexual harassment and assault? Well, again, I don't know the actual results. I haven't seen too much because I've been in India, as you know. Aside from but the I, I think problem. I think that from the standpoint of women, I think it was a great thing. It was a uh, it was a great victory and uh, sends a very strong message, very, very strong message, Peter. Yeah, uh, please. Can I follow up with my question? I just wanted to follow up on hers quickly. Can I, uh, on, on coronavirus specifically, Mr. President, in 2014, when the Ebola situation was very uh, concerning to so many Americans, you tweeted, Ebola patient will be brought to the U.S. in a few days. Now I know for sure that our leaders are incompetent. In all caps, you wrote, keep them out of here. More than 20 Americans have now been brought back to the United States with coronavirus, by your own measure, does that mean that your government has been incompetent? No, Are you pleased no, with the response? There's a big difference, in case you don't know, between Ebola and coronavirus. Big, big difference. It's uh, like day and night. And I felt that we should bring them back. They're Americans. We should bring them back with Ebola. Uh, it was. It's very explosive. It, it's very terrible. We're making tremendous strides on Ebola with the things that we're doing, as you know, people, Isn't some of the people are living with, you're living, Sorry, let please. me answer the question. Uh, but there's a tremendous, there's a vast difference in, in bringing, especially in around 14, was that 14 or 12? Uh, and at that time, nobody had ever even heard of Ebola or ever conceived of something where you basically, people would disintegrate. And uh, it, we're still working on Ebola. We're to doing, be clear, we're all doing the vaccine. Survive, Excuse me. Though, right? so yeah, we're doing a vaccine. We're doing a lot of things uh, having to do with Ebola. We're not forgetting about Ebola. That's a horrible thing. But we have that now very much under control, other than certain parts of the Congo where they're having war and we can't get in. So we're still working on that. But as far as the uh, as far as what we're doing with the new virus, I think that I think that we're doing a great job. Uh, I felt that, and the decision was made in Japan, let these Americans come back and we'll see where they are, but they were immediately put into quarantine. There's no problem with it whatsoever. They're all in quarantine. And as you know, we approved, I approved two and a half billion dollars for 
just that purpose and also for working and getting a vaccine. For clarity, those with Ebola, when they were brought here, were quarantined and all the yeah. Americans also survived, I right? Know, but the, the level of death with Ebola, you know, at the time it was a virtual 100%. But you none of the die. Americans who came here. You don't, you, there's a very good chance you're not going to die. It's just the, it's very much the opposite. You're talking about one or 2%, whereas in the other case, it was a virtual 100%. Now they have it. They have studied it. They know very much. In fact, we're very close to a vaccine. Uh, yeah, please, go ahead. Go ahead, Peter. Oh, all right. We'll, we'll uh, hi, I'm yeah, Swati Chandrasekhar from TV5 Network. Good. Thank you. So how do you define, differentiate, and deal with, uh, deal with the love of yours for Indians in India and Indians' love for H-1B visa in America? So how do you differentiate this? Yeah, we're talking about the H-1Bs, and we are, uh, look, the relationship we have, uh, this is not from me. This is from almost everybody that saw it. They say in the history of India, which has a long history and a, a brilliant history in so many different ways. There's never been a reception given to somebody like was given, and I would like to say for the United States of America, but nobody else that came here got the kind of reception we got. We have been, we gave, it was 125,000, I think, seats they had yesterday, they were full. You had thousands and thousands of people outside. Uh, Prime Minister Modi was telling me thousands of people outside. That's not uncommon for me, to be honest with you, but when I look at 125,000 seats, and that was an incredible scene yesterday. In addition, all of those people lined up from the airport to the event. It was an incredible thing. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. The ambassador uh, just told me that uh, he's, he's been in India, in India for a long time. Uh, he's never seen, in fact, both ambassadors, our ambassador and the ambassador from India, said uh, in 40 years he's never seen anything like it, what took place yesterday and, you know, earlier than that. But yesterday, they've never seen anything like it. So it was a great compliment. It was a great compliment to our country. I'm the leader of the country, but it was a great compliment to our country. But uh, Prime Minister Modi said today they've never, ever had any event like that. In fact, they said usually when somebody comes in, they have to look for people to fill up the areas. They said we had, uh, we, there was something very special. Look, it's a massive country in terms of its population. And people just wanted to see, they wanted to pay their respect to the United States. And so I appreciate it. I was a recipient in a sense, but I was just, I was just really representing the country. 